Oh! Microphone stands. They're like condoms. I don't use them. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Hey, Coots, how you doing? Good. Yeah, rhetorical, I don't care. Uh, a lot of ladies here tonight. A lot of ladies. You ladies, you love to accessorize, don't you? Love it, your bedazzled like cell phone case, your big designer glasses, your fatherless baby. You love to accessorize, right? How about these little purses that women got now? These little designer purses, less than a yard of material made in some sweatshop, but still cost like fucking $600, right? And they don't hold anything. You can't put anything in it, right? No, there's just enough room for my ID, cell phone, keys, and a little bit of perfume and makeup because I can't allow you to see me in my true form. <laughs> what? A wallet? A wallet doesn't fit in there. And why do I need money? You're, you're paying for everything, silly Billy. <laughs> oh, it's nothing like the purse your mom carried, right? Remember that fucking thing? It was huge. Like she could shoplift flat screens in that thing. It was that huge. <laughs> And heavy, oh my god, it weighed as much as a Samoan baby. It was heavy. Yeah. And it, any problem you had, something in the purse solved it, you know? You got a runny nose, here's a Kleenex. You got a boo-boo, here's a Band-Aid, you know? You got a flat tire, here's a Jack. She had everything in there. Oh, I hope I didn't leave my tire iron in my other purse. Yeah. Remember going in after something in your mom's purse? She asked you to go in and you're like, you know, weeding through hairbrushes and warm gum and pictures of dead relatives and shit till you get to like tampons and you're like, whoop, that's it. No, mom, you're gonna have to get it yourself. Ew. And yeah, that's a way to scare off some preteens right there. Some feminine hygiene products. You can line your liquor cabinet with them. Your monarch will remain untouched. <laughs> So yeah, you ever hear those people tell you the book is better than the movie, right? The book's better than the movie. I mean, that may be true, but I can't see how big Hermione's tits get in the book, right? <laughs> You've seen those things. There's some Hogwarts magic going on with those mammoths. <laughs> Made me tickle in my Slytherin. <laughs> yeah. <The> nerds. <laughs> But now, these movies coming out now, they're all like comic book. Those are really popular, the superhero movies. And it makes me think, like, what is the best superpower to have? What is the best superhero power, you know? Maybe some of you are like, yeah, I want to fly, or, you know, I want super strength, or I want Wolverine's healing power. Like, yeah, I don't have to brush my teeth again. This is awesome. <laughs> you know what I think the best superpower would be? Shit money. You just shit money. <laughs> just turns of cash, right? Hey, you'd be the ultimate philanthropist, you know? Well, yeah, when's your charity event? And stocking up on brand, all your fucking problems are solved. Uh, and there would, be, there would be conditions to it as well, you know? Like, depending on what, what your diet is, is what the denomination that comes out, you know? If I'm eating, if I'm eating bar food, you know, it's just like singles and shit, you know? But it's cool, we're going to Bush Company later. Make it rain! <laughs> yeah. You get better food, you know, you get steak, lobsters, it's 20s, 50s, you know? You ever seen the thousand dollar bill? I just ate the world's rarest truffle. Give me three hours, <laughs> set your face to impressed. <laughs> Uh, there would be conditions too though, like when I got sick or something, you know, like, oh, you're just like shit and change then, and you're like, oh my god, with great power comes great responsibility! <laughs> it just sounds like somebody hit jackpot at the Indian casino or something. Uh, but seriously, you shit and money, I mean, that would be the best superpower, right? Sure, Superman can stop a bullet and outrun a train, but how is that going to help people that were just struck by the tornado in the Midwest, you know? You give me a bender at Golden Corral, and I'm fucking shitting out a new trailer park with every bowel movement. Hero! <laughs> uh, guys, fellas, we're pretty stupid, right? We're dumb. Can we agree on that? Yes. Here's here's what I, here's my example. Blow jobs, right? That's what we called them. We put job in the title that we want people to perform and be well at. It's a job. No one likes to work your job, do you? And some of you ladies, you do work like a job. You're like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Oh, it's not a ketchup bottle. That's not the way to make the shit come out. Oh, should have called it something like a, I don't know, blow career, maybe? Uh, something they want more. But then people blow their careers all the time. And they just bite down. We don't want that to happen. Maybe we should have called it something cool like a shopping spree. Right? You ladies love a shopping spree. Nice little shopping spree. Here we go. Oh, watch out for that blowout sale. Bam! You know you love that. Nice little day at the mall with a with a taste of yogurt at the end. Awesome. <laughs> so I seen this uh, article at uh, whatever time you need this to be funny. <laughs> About a, a kid, a college student was kicked off of his football team for being gay. Hey, I read that and I was like, that isn't fair. They deserve a shot at head injuries just like anybody else. <laughs> right? So, but, you know, I keep reading. Now, uh, now I keep reading the article. He was kicked off after he was seen kissing his boyfriend. Eh, unfair. Keep reading the article. Now, he is an 18-year-old freshman, and his boyfriend is a 65-year-old man. Yeah, that's gross, no matter what the gender, right? Yeah, that's gross. It might be fine with you, sir, but not me. Yeah. And you gotta think what that kiss looked like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, if he was just, a, it was his little peck, you'd be like, oh, he's very affectionate towards his grandfather. Or, you know, you know, is he trying to resuscitate that old man? No, oh my God. And it made me think about this guy's father, you know? Not the kid's father, but I'm obviously, or the kid's father, not the old man, you know? His dad died in fucking polio or in a trench in northern France. I'm talking about the young kid, like, you know, him bringing this guy home that's like old enough to be his fucking father, right? Like, he's probably a cool guy, accepted his lifestyle and stuff, but he's got to wonder, like, you know, what do you see in this guy? Oh, dad, as soon as he greeted me at Walmart, I knew it was written in the stars. You know, what can you guys possibly have in common? Oh, he teaches me so many things like bridge and canasta. He tells me Vietnam stories. I keep him apprised of what's new in hip hop and texting shorthand. Oh, F-A-C-G-U, fallen in, can't get up, I gotta go, that's him. His dad's like, shit, you, you're my son, show some fucking pride. You should be fucking just, Justin Bieber's, not John McCain's. You came from these nuts. What, you're 20 years younger than the ones that are in your mouth. Show some pride, son. All right, folks, my name is Chris Coleman. That's as funny as I get.